Aloha. It's August the 19th. It's Wednesday. It's 11 o'clock. It's Trump week. I'm Tim Apicello, your host. And with me is a round table. Well, actually, there's no round table, but there's a, um, a plethora of guests that we have with us today. And I'd like to uh, go right into the introductions. With us today is Jay Fidel, Stephanie Dalton, Cynthia Lee Sinclair, and Winston Welch. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Trump Week. Thank you for morning, uh, thank you for attending. Uh, let's just roll out the roll out with the agenda, and that is the first item is the United States Postal Service. The title of this show is "Deploys Plot to Slow the Mail Will Fail." Um, I think it's already starting to fail, uh, but here's the deal: uh, this gentleman, uh, Louis DeJoy is an, actually an ex-CEO of a logistics company, which he sold, I believe, in 2017 for about $6.2 million. And um, the company was a logistics company. So the fact that you don't have a logistics company unless you understand logistics. And of course, the post office delivery of mail is nothing but logistics. So when he um, gave the order to have mailboxes removed off the street, and uh, the dismantle, uh, the dis disassemble uh, sorting machines, that's all about logistics and what it takes to slow the mail, not improve the mail's uh, delivery service. So Jay, let me go to you. Um, what do you think about Mr. Jajoy's efforts uh, to slow the mail down uh, within 85 days of an election? And particularly, do you think he took any instructions from our, our president, Donald Trump? Uh, yeah, it was sabotage, plain and simple. I, I don't know how else you could describe it. And there's no question from the sequence of events that he did it on Trump's instructions. Um, but what's more interesting right now is his statement that he's not going to do any more of that. I, I don't remember the exact words that he went out with, but um, it was trick words. And uh, what, what it told me was that he wasn't going to make new sabotage efforts but he wasn't going to reverse the old ones either. So he's already damaged the Postal Service. Well, and we, it we is now damaged. What, we don't know to what extent he actually has been successful in that. I, we, we, hear, um, we hear statements from postal workers that yes, things have slowed down dramatically. We see photos on um, the news about bins and large bins of boxes and mail that's been sitting there for nine days. We see those images. But we really don't know to what extent. Well, he's really I think damaged. it's clear that he removed 671 sorting machines from around the country and dismantled them. They're no longer online. They process millions of uh, items of mail every day. Now those have to be done manually. Uh, he cut off overtime. I'm not sure if he's going to reverse that. And he took a lot of postal boxes off the street. I'm not sure he's going to put them back. So he's already done extraordinary damage on the Postal Service query whether it can you know, meet its obligations in November. It's not clear, and it's not clear that he's telling the truth, and it's not clear that he is going to reverse the damage he, he did. I think well, we he's have- gonna meet, He's gonna meet in front of um, the House committee about this, I believe on Saturday. I suspect they'll get a better idea of what he has done, and he'll have to testify under oath of what he has done or what he hasn't done. Uh, do you think there's gonna be any kind of a, legal injunction or any kind of legal action that says he is required to restore that which he dismantled? I think I think there is or will soon be exactly such a suit. Um, but you know, uh, how many days is it to the election? Um, that's that's going to be um, a matter for for legal process that may take some time. And the order that's issued may take some time to implement. So yeah, it's the right thing. Uh, theoretically, it could resolve the problem. Although, you know, how do you put 671 sorting machines, and their multi-million dollar sorting machines, back in place and get them operating again? Um, I think there's going to be a problem, even if there is an injunction. All righty. Stephanie, um, this obviously has an impact not only for the election, but right now, currently, there are lots of veterans a lots of people who get their prescriptions in the mail there's a lot of people that depend on the mail in the smaller towns the smaller rural communities and it's not only democrats that have, have shouted very loudly that this was a completely inappropriate thing to do if not illegal probably is illegal um but i think the administration is hearing it from both sides 
And particularly Donald Trump has, this one has stuck to him because he openly admitted that he, um, he wants to starve the United States post office of money and therefore the Democrats won't get their way with the ballots. Uh, so he's pinned his name to this whole debacle. Was this an overreach from the administration to think that no one was going to notice, no one was able going to do anything about it, and it would just uh, have its quiet, subtle effects on the election? Stephanie. Well, I'm so sorry to have to uh, clarify the situation. Um, and in spite of it, you're mentioning it being an overreach. What I heard last night on talk radio was that don't we all understand that this is something that couldn't have, have, have occurred just spontaneously. This planning has been in the works for a long time. And it is long before this new postmaster was put in place. So this is a long-term plan to solve some of these issues in the post office that with the mail and with people having opportunities to do bad things with the mail. So well, this, this, <laughs> if this is a long term if this is a long-term plan, didn't they think of the, the short-term, long-term consequences of it? Um, Republicans well, are screaming as loud as Democrats are screaming that, you know, their prescriptions are in the mail are being slow. These are people with with serious illnesses that need and, and require those prescriptions. Well, you have to understand that there's been a lot of work going on in this plan to make sure the post office is as be the best it can be. And that's why it started long ago. And this is just the time when it went into effect. And so now there are, there's a chance for reconsiderations. But this wasn't anything that had to do with interrupting the, the, the mail for the election or anything like this. This is just about good business. So that is what... Um, I'm still having trouble closing my mouth this morning about. So um, yes, agreed. I mean, certainly the outcry, which I, I would have liked to have seen the first couple of days because I was very anxious because, uh, but fortunately Nancy Pelosi pulled them back and we have some things happening to get in the way. And if their long-term plan to do this is now informed by the outcry and the concerns expressed, this is a very good thing. But that oh, yeah. one of the streams of information, disinformation that are heading on out there. Uh, Tim, oh, let me add. Let me add that I wrote to Louis DeJoy a few days ago. I wrote to him because his email address is on the web. You can write to him too. And I told him how I felt about this. And I copied the delegation. Um, and of the four in the delegation, one responded to me, and that was Ed Case. Um, and he feels pretty much the same way about it the attack on the post office. Um, well, Jay, let me ask you this. Do you think that Stephanie, th uh, her statement that this has been a long-term plan just didn't, wasn't cooked up in the middle of the night? Um, you know, you brought on a, the, post, the postmaster who's the next CEO of a logistics company. And by the way, I stand corrected. He sold it uh, 2017 for six, $612 million, not $6 million. Um, you know, if you're a CEO of a logistics company, you pretty much know what you're doing when it comes to logistics. Oh, he's a Trumper, man. He was appointed by Trump. He's loyal to Trump. He gave millions of dollars to Trump. Uh, Trump said that uh, he had a problem with mail-in votes. Uh, this is an obvious maneuver by Trump. It's an obvious uh, loyalty uh, loyalty maneuver by DeJoy. No question about it. Um, there, there have been financial problems with the post office. You know, think about the cost of a stamp. It doesn't cover the, the cost of, of sending the mail. Um, but that's not the problem. Congress can support that. It's one of the most important institutions in the country. Uh, no, I think this was a midnight escapade, and it still is. And I don't believe a word those guys say about it. This is a, a conspiracy um, to undermine and sabotage the post office in order to improve Trump's uh, chances on the election. That's my right. view. Well, let me, one quick thing. Let me follow up on, did they not realize what kind of... Um, a blowback they are going to get from from the communities, be it Republican or Democrat communities, red states, blue states, about slowing down the mail. Did they not realize those consequences? It wouldn't be the first time they didn't examine consequences before they did something draconian. Um, what happened here is the most important thing is to screw up the election. He is trying to create chaos. This is a really good way to create chaos. Uh, I'm sure they realized there would be blowback. But the important thing to, to Trump is to win the election at all costs, cheating or otherwise. Okay, thank you, Jay. Hey, uh, Cynthia, the post office, 
uh, one of the arguments that uh, Republicans are using about the post office is it's, it's not profitable. It's not self-sufficient. Um, isn't the post office one of those basic things that government should supply and offer uh, and our taxes should pay for it, that, that we have a reliable post office, whether it's profitable or not? I can't think of how many other agencies or, or services that the government provides that does not provide or does not present a, prof a profitable balance sheet. Isn't the post office one of those things? And should the post office be profitable or just let it run efficiently? And yes, taxpayer dollars will, will subsidize it. Absolutely, it's in the constitution. It's not just something they came up with, you know, on a whim and didn't put together in a very serious way that is protected by the constitution. And that's, you know, the part that I think is being missed by everybody. And yeah, sure, I agree with Tim. Sure, they had problems that maybe needed to be fixed and needed to be worked on, especially with this, you know, new glut of mail that's going to be coming because of the pandemic, not just for the, the ballots, but for all things that people are getting their groceries and their, and their medicines and all of these things. I haven't got my um, social security check. It's already a week and a half late. Things like that, that I, I really count on it. And how many other people are like me that count on it? Now, you guys have heard me talk for a long time about how he's going to cheat. Well, I think he had it all set to cheat with the electronics with the, the vote tabulation software. But then suddenly when all this mail in ballot stuff started, he had to change up his approach. And I think that's an important thing to remember. The timing is so indicative of the fact that he did this on purpose intentionally. And then we have his own words to go by. He has come out <laughs> and said it in so many words that the, the mail needs to fail, that we need to do something to interrupt this mail in voting because it's you know fraught with fraud and all these other things that he's claimed. But you know, he's cheating right in front of our eyes. And that's the part that worries me the most and bothers me the most. And so I'm very glad that um, Nancy Pelosi has called back the house for this weekend. Um, the fact that they left to begin with just made me so angry at this point in time to choose that for a, you know, let's just go on our regular summer recess when the world is falling apart and America is definitely falling apart. They need to stay in their seats and do their job, in my opinion. Okay, well, now it's up to the Senate to get their, their tails back into, uh, yeah. into the, the Senate chamber. Okay, we thank you. <laughs> thank you, Cynthia. Hey, Winston, you know, I was kind of, playing around and toying in my mind what the title of the show should be. And part of it was the ghost of Benjamin Franklin whispers in Donald Trump's ear, go ahead, make my day. But it was too long of a title, so I couldn't do it. Um, what do you think Nancy Pelosi is going to do? What do you think um, the House is going to do when they come back? Uh, what do you think they're going to say and do uh, this Saturday when Louis DeJoy sits in front of them and you know, provides his testimony? What, what, what do you think, what ramifications can a politician or the body of politicians do in this, uh, this situation? Well, I mean, the, uh, do we honestly believe that there's going to be um, truthful, forthright testimony from Mr. DeJoy or any member of the administration on any topic? It's something think, called perjury, you know. It, it's it, it, you don't have to, it doesn't necessarily have to be perjury to say, I don't remember or I don't recall or... Um, just, just to say, I think I've already answered that question, or whatever. And what there's no, there's no repercussions for it. We also have to remember that that half the nation is believing that somehow has been told that voting by mail is going to end up in fraud, unless you live in the states of Florida or Arizona, apparently, where Donald Trump says, okay, you should vote by mail in those states. How they are different than the rest of the U.S. postal system, I haven't quite figured out yet. Um, I don't think there's going to be, uh, there's obviously a huge um, uproar about this. It was, but as, as Stephanie has said before, a lot of trial balloons being floated all the time. And as Cynthia pointed out, he's been very transparent about saying, I don't want this to happen because it will ruin my chances of, at re-election. And he, he said before that if there, if we voted by mail, there would be no more, more Republican Party or something to that effect. 
if I'm remembering correctly, uh, you know, a, a while ago. So uh, the the threat is there. Uh, as Cynthia was saying, the machines were going, it could be changed, but you got paper, paper has a trail, paper can be audited um, and it gets more people voting. Look what happened here in Hawaii. I went double the number of people voting by mail. So Good point. Uh, people do want to vote for mail, uh, vote, vote by mail, but they also, this is a critical essential service for people. People get their medicines from the mail. And I think it doesn't matter whether you're a Democrat, Republican, or independent, or none of the above. You still like to get your medicines in the mail. Well, let me, let me go to Jay's point that he made, and that was a lot of damage has already been done. Uh, to what degree does that damage, um, do we restore the post office as far as the, the sorting machines and or the, the, uh, the replacement of the mailboxes that were taken from communities? Does that happen between now and the election? Does, does that uh, restoration take place? No, it won't take place. Um, and, you know, there's this is just part of uh, the entire um, uh, modus operandi of this of this uh, administration, which is to um, discredit uh, institutions of our of the, the federal government unless it serves the purpose of this particular administration. So we're not going to see that. But what we might see in a lot of states is some sort of emergency measures that say, we're going to set up ballot reception places all over the place so that you can drop off your ballot if you're not feeling like it's going to get into the post office. Or you're going to have a lot of states say, um, mail this two weeks early or three weeks early or the day. Right. No, I, I see proactive measures now being taken. But let me press you on this. Um, is it a lack of authority to restore the damage been done or is it a matter of apathy or both? Uh, no, I think people want their mailbox. I mean, you know where, if you, if you have a secure thing and you're worried about someone taking your mail, you know where the blue bin is in your neighborhood. And if that's suddenly gone, um, you know, that's a loss of, think about what the mail is. The mail is, that is the ultimate sort of federal presence in our lives it comes to our door every single day the postman is uh, the, or the post post lady uh, the postal workers they are they are agents of the federal government they can uh, confirm your identification for a passport they do all sorts of things as agents of the federal government so the need is there that's not going away i think as far as the issue of subsidies or whatnot you know d d double our rates raise the rates on Amazon. Those are all reasonable things to do, but not taking away sorting machines, not take, not purposely uh, sort of the subterfuge of the post office. It's completely unacceptable. And Americans are realizing, I kind of like my post office to deliver. I think a lot of Americans like their post office. Okay, thank you, Winston. Hey, before we move on to the next item, uh, Jay, what was the response of Ed Case uh, to your inquiry to Mr. DeJoy? Uh, he wrote me a, a letter expressing his position, and it's the same as my position. Um, I wrote back to him and said, how about coming on Think Tech and doing a show on this? Because he's been going to the media, you know, he was, he was in Civil Beat this morning. And uh, they agreed to do a show. We had, we're in the process of uh, nice. something on the schedule. Nice. But okay. let me add this one thing, Tim. You know, what can people do? What can the country do about this mail problem? Uh, bringing the House back is not dispositive. It's just the House. I don't know what kind of legislation they could do that would be binding. You know, legislation requires the Senate, too, and it requires the president to sign off or, or fail to veto. Um, that's not going to happen. The other thing is, if Trump succeeds in, in creating this chaos and sabotage for the mail service, and if he then wins, trust me, no one will be punished. There will be no... Um, there'll be no response at all. He will completely have gotten away with it. That's a real problem. And well, he I, I would agree to that point until we hear what, what the results are on November the 3rd. That might be ju justice and punishment enough. Who knows? Well, Let's you see. know, one more thing. All right, Jay. Uh, I, sure. we haven't talked about yet in regards to, to DeJoy. He has lots of money invested in UPS and FedEx, so he's got a really serious conflict of interest in making the post office fail. His, you know, the companies that he's invested in will well, why end up wasn't that? Why wasn't that discovered before he got the position, appoint, the appointment? Well, I'm sure it was, but um, we in the Senate, they just shoved him through. I think this is a last minute attempt to, to um, 
to destabilize the post office at the last minute here before the election. And I don't know as he'll be able to reverse any of the stuff that he's already done. So and, I'm really already, and look at it also, Tim, that all of the heads of the administration and so many departments are exactly have stated positions to dismantle those those organizations uh, as we understand them. So these this is not by by. Um, well, I, I say it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a political suicide run then, because if you look at the polling numbers, America loves its post offices, both Republicans and Democrats and independents. They all do. So um, go ahead, dismantle it and find out what that results like in uh, November the 3rd. So, okay, okay, just remember that there, there'll, there'll be a lot of people frustrated from voting on November the 3rd. And he could get away with it without any accountability if he can stop the people who would vote against him. All right. For all people watching the show, get out there and drop them off at Election Depot. Um, as you get your ballots, vote early. Uh, Jay, we had a thousand page report from the Intelligence Committee, which is a, primarily a Republican, you know, it was a Republican report about the involvement of the administration in 2016 and uh, to what degree they were involved with Russia. Quite a scathing report. And I think the thing that caught my eye was the fact that Donald Trump, in a written response to Mueller, basically said he had no knowledge or no involvement with uh, discussions about WikiLeaks and the release of uh, WikiLeak uh, emails with Roger Stone. That now has been um, pretty much flushed out that he did have direct involvement and direct knowledge. Isn't that called perjury? Yeah, this is astounding. He was caught in a lie. Um, the question is whether the public has enough stomach to go back into that whole thing about his uh, manipulation of uh, foreign powers and uh, his encouragement of Putin. I think it's clear what happened. Everybody knows at a sort of fundamental level what happened. This is not that much of a surprise, actually. And I think a lot of people are sort of tired of it. What's interesting, too, is that Michael Cohn is writing this book. It should be out any day. This is also going to put the lie to Trump about his, um, his project in Moscow, his big hotel project. And he specifically lied on that one too. And Trump is, he's, and Michael Cohn is gonna put the lie to him on that too. This is all gonna come out be between now and the election. It should do damage to him, but I'm not convinced that his base is gonna turn about it. You have many surveys, of exactly what Jay is saying, that if his supporters say, if he was shown to have been helped by the Russians or anybody else to get into office, does it matter? Nope, doesn't matter. Happy he's in. Can I Go just ahead, say, Stephanie. Um, thank you. Um, could we get off the shiny objects, please? Who cares? Okay. Yes. What we need to do is exactly what Hawaii did and it is doing, and Hawaii can step up and lead the nation. We need orange boxes all over everywhere. And forget the post office. If, if it works, it works. If you get it in early, get it in. Otherwise, get those orange boxes out there and there'll be legions of volunteers to pick them up. And um, All right, good point, just, let's good point get, Stephanie. Yes, let's get to the resolution of this, the remedy to get us over the bridge, please. Yes. All right, thank you. Okay, Jay, um, one last question here is, um, Paul Manafort in this report was identified as a grave counterintelligence threat. Um, you know, here's a former general of the United States Army. Uh, here is a, you know, was a, an esteemed uh, military figure. And, and now his legacy is he's been labeled a grave counterintelligence threat, a spy, if you will. Um, and under what administration is that tolerated and um, ignored for the most part? Well, this has characterized the Trump administration from the outset. God knows what kind of midnight calls Trump has had with Putin. And he's got all these people around him who have been identified as much too close uh, counterintelligence threats. It's not only Manafort, in my opinion. Um, so, you know, what's happened is uh, we, have, we have seen the Mueller report go much further. Uh, we have seen Trump's connection with Russia go much further. And we have seen Russia's efforts uh, screwing up the 2016 election and this one, they say this one, what they're doing in this one is worse. Uh, and yet to go back to the point with Winston, does that change the base? Does that flip the base? 
There are a lot of people feel, well, that's fair. It's a part of the ball game. You can do that, even though to, to, to the people I know, it's cheating. It's not only cheating, it's espionage. It's not only espionage, it's treason. What we have here is treason. Okay, well, isn't there, shouldn't that be a call to arms that we want to know? All these multiple calls over the last couple of two, three months that Donald Trump has had with Putin. Isn't it even more important now to find out the nature of those calls and the disclosure and the transparency of those calls? Um, yes, but how is that going to happen? Exactly. I mean, this is useless. Do not deter, de detract from the main issue. We're not going to get anywhere with that, even if we had time. So why is it that we're not focusing? Okay, so we, just, we throw up our hands. We say, oh, it can't happen. It won't happen. Oh, Later. dear. Oh, me. Oh, my. Um, Cynthia, let me go to you on this. Is that what we do as a nation? Say, um, you know, he's had all these clandestine calls with Putin. And in light of this thousand page report, we just say, oh, well, a la di da. What's your point? What's your position on that? I would like to see Nancy Pelosi bring that up, like now. Which is why I was kind of mad that they left. That should be our every single representative and senator that we have should be talking about this. This was a bipartisan report. And I don't care if we're 80 days or 20 days away from the election. I think every bit of this report should be broadcast throughout this country to really um, steal the role of each and every Democrat or every independent or anybody who's maybe on the fence. And even some of these Republicans, they need to know because I'm sure they're not okay. Most are not okay with him dealing with Russia, inviting Russia into our elections. We've been fighting against that very thing for how many decades? Yeah, we, we may be burned out by it, but I agree with you. Okay, Winston, you get the last comment here. We're almost out of time. Winston, does it take more blowback as it was with the post office debacle that the American public actually took arms and, and, and contacted their congressman and said, enough's enough with the post office? Is this a similar situation where Americans will say, um, I want to know what Donald Trump's been saying to Putin for the last two to three months? Does that happen or do we just move on from this? <laughs> you know, it, it, both. Uh, we, we educate ourselves as best as we can about what's out there. We look at what the what uh, types of news the other half of the nation is getting because they're not getting this news. We try and address their issues as best as we can. But the reality is it's not going to make a difference. And if it did make a difference, it would probably be perceived positively by half of the country. So um, I don't think it's, it's like Stephanie said, it's a shiny object. Let's focus on the goal, which is to have a very um, resounding uh, defeat of Donald Trump at the polls, uh, to restore the soul of our nation so that we can get back. It's like a hurricane has hit us, an earthquake, something, and we need to move on and just pick up the pieces and start rebuilding again. All right, thank you, Winston. You get the last word on that. Uh, I'd like to thank you, Winston. I would like to thank you very much, Cynthia. Stephanie, Jay, thank you for joining us on Trump Week. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host. We'll see you next Wednesday, 11 o'clock. Much aloha to all of you.